This is the Detroit Edison 202. I'm Darren, and this is the Industrial Revolution. But today, we're not here to talk about the Hall engine. I love steam engines, but today we're going to focus on something a little bit smaller. So have you ever wondered how a steam train knows which direction it should be going? Well, it's in here. And today I'm hoping to explain exactly how that works. So if you think about it, most steam engines, stationary steam engines, only turn in one direction. Uh, so when you start them up, they always go the same direction, and usually they always go the same speed, ideally as well. Steam trains are different. The steam trains have to be able to speed up, slow down, go backwards, go forwards, stop, and do that fairly reliably. And think about how steam, steam trains work, that's not always an easy thing for them to do. So how does it actually happen? Well, it, it, it's, it's all in this box. So let's, let's start off with how the actual uh, steam cylinder works. So this is a double acting cylinder. And that means that you can put steam into this side and push the piston this way. When it gets to this end, you put steam in this side, you push it that way. And you keep alternating back and forth between the, uh, the pistons. They compare that to your car, for example, where you put uh, the gas into the bottom of the cylinder and it only pushes up. And the only reason it goes back down is because of a camshaft. So you've got a double acting cylinder here. And with that double acting cylinder, you have this big box on top. And you've always got a big box like this on top. So it's a box, but it looks like another cylinder. And this is called the steam case. And what this does is, thanks to this lever here, uh, it's actually moving a piston back and forth, kind of in sync with this, that controls which side of the piston the steam will go into. And to get a better idea of how this works inside, we have to actually go across the river over to Providence Metro Park. Hey, welcome to Providence Metro Park and the Heritage Center here in the park. Uh, there is a lot more to see in this park, and we'll certainly be back here when things warm up a bit. Uh, we have a restored historic lock. Uh, it's lock number 44 on the Miami and Erie Canal. Uh, right next door, we have a, a water-powered mill, which has grist mill and sawmill and machine shop, all water-powered, as well as the blacksmith shop. And in the summer, they actually are operating and open to the public. Uh, like all Toledo Metro Parks, the park here is free. Uh, the canal actually does have a replica canal boat, mule drawn, uh, that you can ride through the lock for just a few bucks. So if you're ever in the area, it's Grand Rapids, Ohio, by all means, feel free to stop by. And the steam train we were looking at earlier, that's just across the river. But today, we're here to look at this. Uh, this is a replica of the inner workings of a steam engine. And Pretend this is your wheel. So, pistons over here, the pistons running, and we'll zoom in on that in a second, and that turns the wheel. And you see there's a assembly in the back here, and that runs across here and drives this. If you've ever seen steam engines, you see there's rods and stuff all over the place. Uh, this is what's inside of the steam chest. So this is your piston, this is your steam chest. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can get a better idea of exactly what's going on here. So before we get started uh, looking in detail at how this piston works, I do want to ask for some help. Uh, as you know, YouTube channels live and die on subscribers and likes. So if you are getting anything out of this video, out of this channel, you want to see more, please do hit the like button and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. Hit notify. And if you can leave a comment also, uh, more than two, three words, YouTube really uses that in the algorithm to decide, hey, there's interaction going on. This is a great channel. It's going to show it to even more and more people. So that's the best way that you can help out the channel. Also, I do have a Patreon page at patreon.com slash industrial revolution. If you could help out there, uh, membership started just a few bucks a month. And let's go ahead and take a closer look at this. So this is your piston right here. I was going back and forth inside of the cylinder. And the way it works, imagine your steam is coming into the middle of this. 
So when it's over here, the steam comes down this way and pushes the piston over this way. It gets to this end, and you see this is now turned off, and this one's wide open. So now steam comes in this way, and it pushes it back over here. So as this moves, you're constantly changing steam in this side, steam in this side, steam in this side, steam in this side. And that's the way that uh, you end up with a double acting piston. If you have an air pump for your bike or a water pump, and it actually pumps water in both directions, uh, both the up and the downstroke. This is exactly how that works. Now on the outside, what's not really shown here, so here you have steam coming into here, you have the exhaust side over here. This is what is also captured in that steam chest. And that goes out to either the smoke box and up through the uh, smokestack, or it goes out through the, uh, uh, up to another pipe out to a second low pressure uh, piston, low pressure cylinder, elsewhere on the train. Now for the reverser rod, all that does is it actually just moves this. It moves it forward or backward. So, unfortunately on this model it doesn't move. So instead of uh, being here, you throw the reverser rod, just slide this advance on it. So it had been pushing it this way, now it's going to push it that way. That makes the wheels go the other direction. So it's a really ingenious system. It works great. Uh, other systems, if you've seen stationary steam engines, incidentally, they don't have reverser rods on them, but they often do have a, a governor on them. That's the thing usually sitting at the top with the two big steel balls on it. And the steel balls are spinning. And that changes the exact position of this so that if it speeds up above where they want it, it'll put a little bit less steam in and that'll let it slow down to where they want it. If it's going too slow, the, the balls will, will fall back down. It'll open this up a little bit and advance it a bit and that lets it run a little bit more steam into it. And that's how it tries to maintain a reasonably constant speed even when there are uh, changing loads on as you hook machines up and, and disconnect them from the belt drive system. So let's go ahead and go back over across the river, back over to the train again. So welcome back. Uh, so you saw how this is a double acting cylinder here and can run both directions. Up here you have, looks like a dumbbell that slides back and forth, opening and closing the inlets, the two inlets here. Uh, all the output steam comes up into the steam chest and in this case, goes out through the stack, uh, goes up into the smoke box and out the stack. Uh, in some larger steam engines, if you have more than one of these on each side, uh, you're actually going to have your first one, your high pressure uh, steam, where the steam first comes from the boiler. That's high pressure, that's going to be a smaller piston. The output from this then will go to the larger piston and that one is a low pressure steam uh, piston and they both provide about the same amount of driving force so how, how do you actually do that well the way you do it is when you put steam into here so let's say we put steam into here and it starts to push this back uh, when it's pushed all the way back this steam is still under pressure it's still under a lot of pressure so what you do is then you vent it to the other cylinder and the other cylinder has lower pressure, but it expands also. But it's actually a little bit more complicated than that even. Uh, you have this right here, which is uh, a reverser rod connected up to the reverser lever in the cab that the engineer uses, sometimes called the Johnson bar. And that actually adjusts the, uh, the exact positioning of this, uh, this valve in here. And what you can do uh, is that you will Instead of leaving this open the whole time as this pushes back, um, you'll actually close it part way. So maybe it's 50% when the inlet closes. So now there's no more steam coming into it, but it's still expanding. Because you still have pressure, it's still pushing it back. And that actually is considered to be running an expansion. Uh, you don't get as much power that way, so you don't start off that way, especially if you have a heavy train but it's a lot more efficient that way. 
And using that efficiency, uh, you can cut down the amount of water you use, you can cut down the amount of fuel that you use. Um, water, when these things were running, water was pretty much considered free, uh, but fuel was not. Fuel is a big cost for railroads, uh, just like it is today. So running it more efficiently was a good thing. So what you would do to start the train is you'd, you'd open up your throttle all the way, get the maximum steam down to here. You would open up this uh, reduction valve as far as you could, and that would give you the maximum torque. Once you got started, though, you would pull uh, back on the reversing lever, some on the Johnson bar. Uh, in the middle, it's uh, actually stopped. There's no more pressure going into here. Uh, so you'd pull it back partway to maintain your speed, but to just maintain your speed, ideally. You don't want to just keep throwing all that speed, all that steam into here and just dumping all the high pressure steam out the top without getting any work out of it. You want as much work from that steam as you can get. So you just leave the throttle wide open and adjust your speed with the Johnson bar. So what do you do if you want to go backwards? Well, as you probably caught from the reversing rod and the reversing lever up in the cab, uh, you move that back, so from the center, uh, no steam's going into here at all. You pull it back, and steam starts to go in the other direction. So instead of, so your piston's here, and if you put steam here, it's going to push this back, and that's going to make the train go forward. But instead of putting it here, you put steam in here, which pushes the piston that way. It turns the wheels the other way around. Now, instead of the train going forward, the train goes backwards. And as you saw over on the, uh, on the model, over in Providence, um, that actually is a really effective system. And I just slide this one bar back and forth to change the direction, change the efficiency of the engine. Now, efficiency was everything. Don't forget that, the efficiency was everything. So, one other question that comes up. So, if I look at a piston, and it's all the way at one end, and the bar, the drive bar is straight out the back, I can't make it go anywhere. And on stationary engines, uh, they actually would need to like physically get a bunch of people and pull the flywheel to move the, uh, the flywheel around to get the piston where they needed it so that it could actually apply force. You've never seen anybody do that with a steam train. You never will because it's not needed. Steam trains always have two pistons, and although it's not obvious, uh, in fact, on this train, actually, both of the pistons are all the way forward right now. But if you look at the wheels, you'll see the wheels are 90 degrees off. So as you can see on this side, the wheels are set up, the front of the engine is to the left. Uh, the wheels are set up with the, uh, the drive point about 45 degrees up and forward. Over on the other side, the piston is still all the way forward, but as you can see, the, the wheels on this one are down and forward about 45 degrees. So they're rotated about 90 degrees. And that's always the case on steam trains, and they do that out of necessity just to make sure that they never get stuck. So no matter where you end up stopping, even if one set of wheels is the piston straight back, that means the other set is either straight up or straight down, which is where it has the maximum power. So you always have at least one set of wheels that has good power on it, even if the other set doesn't. And that means that no matter where you stop, you can always start again, either forwards or backwards using this reversing rod. And that's how you tell us a steam engine what way to go. So next time you see a steam engine, next time you ride on one, uh, you know, everyone sees the piston, everyone sees the cylinders, everyone sees the giant wheels, the, the boilers, the smoke box, the fire box. But people usually don't, don't pay much attention to the steam chest here. And that's really too bad because this steam chest is what tells the train where to go, really. And that's why this is the Industrial Revolution.